to Hard Working Mom Services. We're here now at 559 Auburn Road at the headquarters of Mark Holland, who's running for Mayor of Pontiac. We are here at Nair Camp. We was invited as with the new candidate that's running for mayor, Mr. Mark Holland, and for District 7, our own Kermit Wiggins. This is Mark Holland's camp that's running and doing everything here. His some of his people, he have a lot of other people. So as we begin to pray before we get started, Elder Bell come with the prayer to start the show off with, and then we'll go from there. Amen. 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 Uh, how's everybody doing in TV land? I'm going to go forth in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and praise you for life, health, and strength. We thank you right now that you just bless us all. We thank you and praise you for this campaign. We thank you and praise you for this ministry. We thank you and praise you for change in the city that's needed right now. This, this camp, bless everything that they do, and they shall prosper, and we declare victory in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, as I interview the candidates, uh, we're going to start with District 7. Uh, Mr. Kermit Williams, can you tell me and the reason why you so adamant of keeping District 7 straight and clean because Veronica Taylor Biffle is living in your districts and uh, I want to know, what are you going to do for our district to keep it going? Well, thank you for having me on your show today. Thank uh, Elder Bell for uh, videotaping and thank everybody that's here. It's great to be on the east side of Pontiac, uh, right now in Pontiac, Michigan. I was born on Pike Street, born in St. Joe. That was the only time I was on the south side. Ever since then, I've been in District 7 uh, my whole life, which is the greatest district. I know Councilman Holland represents District 5, which is pretty good, too. Uh, but uh, it's, it's been a great uh, honor. You know, some of the things that we've been able to get done is uh, not only working through emergency management, working two years without getting paid, We've got tons of new houses in the city. Also, uh, some of the major things, we're right here off of MLK. Um, Paddock Street's repaved, and they're doing work on Michigan right now, Councilman Holland. So uh, those are the three worst streets that we used to have in Pontiac, and now they're changed. And those are things that we can do uh, as uh, council people. But I'm so proud to be here. The reason that I agreed to even come on here is because Councilman Holland was really instrumental in making sure that the youth village got on the ballot. There was a lot of people who put it on their literature right now that didn't even want to see the youth millage, uh, uh, millage on the ballot. And so it's important to have something for our kids in the city of Pontiac and uh, I'm just proud of people who have worked together and put differences aside to make sure the city of Pontiac flows smoothly. But it's still work to be done. Okay, now while we got you, you know, uh, Hard Working Moms is about putting people on spots because, see, I'm for the people. I paid the streets for the people. You tell me, you know, I, are, are you voting for the right thing in this city to get cleaned up? Are you running the race is clean because I'm, I'm so tired of seeing all everybody saying this one and that. We ain't calling no names. Ain't nobody bringing no names. We won't change. Are you for the right change to get things did here in the city of Pontiac? Uh, I hope I'm from the right, for the right change, but uh, clearly I'm not running the negative campaign. We always uh, just talk about what we've been doing in the city and so I'm a, a strong believer in working on your resume uh, that's why when I talk about Councilman Holland I can talk about the things he's done I know a lot of people are very personality driven in this election they say well I like this person because they wear nice clothes I like this person because of that but it's all about time to get back to the substance this is a crucial election for the city of Pontiac and the east side is going to have to work with whoever gets elected but most importantly you need to have somebody that has a heart so I appreciate the office even being here on the the east side of Pontiac. So if I'm um, for the right kind of change, uh, I think that we're for progress. Amen. Not just change for the sake of change, but change in the right direction to make progress in the city. And I'm totally against the slander. People send negative campaigning uh, material to my house, but nobody's knocked on my door uh, with that campaign. And if you got something bad to say about me, at least knock on my door and say it yourself. Don't send somebody, don't send a newspaper article, don't leave hate mail, because guess what? Everybody in Pontiac is semi-related. We're a big, small city. We're not Detroit. We're not Flint. We're Pontiac. Most of the people who worked here came to make a better life from their family from South. My family is from Lebanon, Tennessee. They came all the way up here, and now people are my cousins. you got to think about it. Uh, Mark Holland's auntie is, is my godmother. This is a small city. So yeah. what I'm saying is when you talk about one person, you talk about everybody. So the one thing I would say to your fans and your viewers is 
Vote based on what somebody is going to do That's what for the I'm job, to say. not based on how you feel about a person. I don't have to like you to vote for you, That's but right. I do have to respect what you're going to do for the community. And so if we can get back to that and back to platform, and I would really like to see in these last 15 days for them to have a one-on-one -on -one debate where the people actually ask the questions. We don't had a lot of moderators. We don't had a lot of other that's people. What I'm but we haven't, talk about. we haven't had an opportunity to hear what the vision is. Pure and simple. Ten minutes for each candidate to really make their case to Pontiac would be huge. But I guess Mark Holly can make his case today because he's going to be on the show after me. But the one no, thing I do want to say. You all can be able to talk now because, see, what I don't like is don't slander. Let's stick to the topics and the issues. Mm -hmm. And I'm for the topics and the issues because that's going to help the people. Mr. Mark Holland invited hardworking mom service into his camp. And I asked to come in and he gave me a volunteer. I would have gave it to the mayor too, but I don't know. Me and her still ain't I had that uh, conversation. She keep giving that promise, but that's not here nor there. Right about now, it's what the people. And I feel that Mr. Mark Holland can speak more about what he can do for the people than anybody. Because he's the one running for mayor. All that, you all need to listen to Mr. Mark Holland, who's running for mayor of Pontiac, and see the things that I have seen, because I'm going to talk to you about what I'm about to do in a minute. Go ahead, Mr. Mark Holland. Well, thanks for hard working, Mobs, for having us again. And before we get started in the dietary, uh, uh, what we get ready to talk about, I walked in the door, and it was just uplifting to see uh, my childhood friends surrounding me in this camp of 40 years. And for that to be here to support me, it brought tears to my eyes. And I just wanted to thank them uh, for being here and supporting and to know what type of individual. If a person don't know you within 40 years, then they don't, they would never know you. And so for them uh, to do a grassroots campaign, uh, we got my guy back here, uh, he's called himself the world. And we also have I don't know if you're blocking my other guy back oh, there, uh, Corey Thompson. Uh, I don't know if, the, if we can scan the room. We got my man Emmanuel Pittman over here. We have my godmother over here, Miss Canova Sharpton over here. We have this young man over here that's just been working hard and eagerly and making phone calls. We got my man over here, Big Brian over here, who's also a vendor within the city of Pontiac. Uh, we also have my good friend Joseph Seclair. Then we also have my campaign manager sitting on the phone who is my best friend and wife, uh, who should be paying attention to what's going on <laughs> over here uh, within our, our headquarters. And so I just wanted to take this time publicly, because this is going to be aired, uh, to thank you. And there's other people that have been helping this campaign tremendously that's not here that I wanted to personally thank them too. And then secondly, it is an honor uh, and a privilege to sit next to this man right here. Uh, I was elected in 2014, and out of all the sitting council people, he I'm older than him, but he feels like he's a big brother, and so that's fine. He took me under his wing and uh, taught me what a councilman was supposed to be. Uh, he showed me uh, what to look at, um, how to prepare, and to be a man of action. And so I wanted to commend him uh, for taking me on this true list for me to be in this position. And then secondly, I wanted to let it be known uh, that uh, I wasn't necessarily the first choice uh, to run for mayor. Uh, actually, it was a dialogue that we had with the current council person, uh, Kermit Williams, uh, who was slated to run for mayor, and we got together and I was selected. And I appreciate him for his support, and I appreciate for him to even be in here today, because I think he would have been a great mayor as well. But like I told him before, and I just want to throw it out there, I see him at the, more of a state representative level next year. Uh, that mm -hmm. term limit is up. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel as though as me as mayor and him as city council president, because uh, I know he's going to be reelected next year, mm -hmm. Mark Mayor, Kermit President of Council, and then we can elevate him uh, to state rep where he can really bring some real money here within our city. So I want to put that out there first. Uh, this wasn't, uh, he didn't know I was going to say that. But to go forward, what I stand for, uh, you know, Kermit and I sit on one important committee, it's the Finance Committee. And it's so important that the citizens understand um, what the smoke and mirrors are, are what's going on in the committee. First of all, with the Phoenix Center litigation, no, I did not put out any negative literature regarding that, but it's apparently that someone else is out there 
putting out negative lit literature. Uh, there has been quite uh, some negative literature put out against my camp and myself, but we're going to pray for those people. Um, we're just going to continue to love them anyway because that's what God told us to do. But uh, to the Phoenix Center litigation and to the Phoenix Center, uh, we should be utilizing that structure right now. Mm -hmm. We should be having concerts right now. And Kermit and I can contest that. We had that settlement, I think it was around $5 million, and we sat with the owners and we tried to get a resolve uh, with the negotiation process. Now it's maybe a year or so ago, and it was put out that we were negotiating against ourselves. And so now we are into millions of dollars of taxpayers' money that could have been used for the youth. Uh, now, in bringing up the youth and the youth center, uh, I have to contest this and tell the public what was really going on. Kermit was on the Eighth Council, and when I got elected to the Ninth Council, the first thing he said is that he's been trying to get something for these kids, and he couldn't get anyone to support his idea. Seeing I was the chairman of the law subcommittee, uh, I got with the attorney at that time, and we sat down, we wrote three languages, and two of the languages was for the David E. Walt Center, and those two uh, languages for those uh, millage got pushed to the side. And so we worked, Kermit and us also worked, we got the language together, uh, four of us put it on the ballot, uh, you guys passed it, I think it was like 17,000 votes to help these children. But what's surprisingly now that so many people want to take credit for the youth and the youth millage, but no one was talking about this uh, prior to even Kermit uh, coming on and Kermit and I getting together to get it out here to the public. Secondly, with the youth, the money that's allocated now, the 400000 no one in their budget process put that money in that budget. Kermit Williams worked on that budget, and he put $400,000 hey. on the process to put it out there to make sure that these kids had something for the youth. And so I wanted to be clear that now that everybody's saying that they had these kids and they had their kids' interests in mind, that is not true. If it wasn't for this man right here allocating that money out the budget to have something for these children. Now as far as the millage, the reason why we didn't levy the millage is because we didn't have a center. There was not a plan in place. And so as council people, uh, with our fiduciary responsibilities, we was not going to raise the taxes on Mr. and Mrs. Pontiac, and we didn't have uh, something in place for these children, and we still don't have something in place for these children. So I'm asking the citizens uh, to really search their hearts, and we get let's get out of the name recognition, let's get out of, of how we feel about a person, let's see what we can really do. Uh, right now, we feel like we're still in the emergency management process, and even though the emergency manager is gone, and even though the city administrator is gone, but their agenda is still being followed. And so when Kerbett mentioned about Paddock being repaved, East Boulevard got repaved under us, they're working on Michigan Street, uh, I definitely want to put out that we also got Featherstone Bridge replaced. Uh, we've done that uh, as a collective team. And so when you drive around our city and you see Mr. and Mrs. Pontiac is not doing asphalt, and when you look driver on our city and Mr. and Mrs. Pontiac is not uh, cutting the grass where the vendors are from outside, uh, we have 90% vendors in our city. And with the 90% vendors in our city, uh, how many look like Mr. and Mrs. Pontiac? Uh, with the Dream Cruise activity we just had last past month, when you go and look at the vendors that was out here, uh, how many was Mr. and Mrs. Pontiac? And so now we have to uh, start recir recirculating our dollars. Uh, living in the past, uh, when General Motors was here, and I think the city had maybe 170 or 180 million dollar budget that we had money to do things with. But right now, we're only working with a 30 million dollar budget to take care of 60,000 residents. And I think about 22,000 dollars, 22 million, I'm sorry, 34 million dollar budget, with 22 million dollars of that budget going to two contractors by itself. So that doesn't leave much to deal and do things within the city. So what we have to do now is start taking what's left and start recirculating our dollars and start hiring Mr. and Mrs. Pontiac as vendors. I know a lot of you out there know someone with a truck and a trailer and a lawnmower. They should be at the table. I was always taught if you ain't at the table, you on the menu. And right now, we on the menu and we need an opportunity to be at the table and to make sure that Mr. and Mrs. Pontiac get an opportunity. Now for those that seniors that's, that's there that may be on fixed income and for those that seniors are have paved the way, I want to say thank you, but think about your sons, your daughters, your grandkids, your nieces, your nephews that can't get a job within the city. And then when they find a job that's so far out, then they have to deal with the harassments 
uh, going to and from work. And so we have to now take charge of our city. We still own the Ewald Center. We could turn that into the State of the Art Center and then uh, build other centers within our community. We can still do with the Phoenix Center. We still own it. We can still do things within our community with our own resources. So it's time for us to step, step up and stand up and take control of our community. I was born here, I was raised here, and I never left the city. Uh, and as Kermit said, I am a true east sider. A lot of my friends know I lived on the east side majority of my life. Uh, went to the north side with my mother, but my heart is for everyone in this community. And so I'm asking Mr. and Mrs. Pontiac, not only to uh, keep Kermit Williams as council seat, uh, I hope and pray that he does become the city council president, but I'm asking you for your vote. I'm asking you to promote me from a council person to a mayor who's going to have your best interest in mind. I need for Mr. and Mrs. Pontiac to show up and show out November 7th and elect a team of Pontiac people who's going to put Pontiac people first. And right now, we have so many developments coming in the city. They say they're bringing jobs to the city, but how many of you know that have some, that know somebody that's getting these jobs? And so when they come into our city and they ask for any type of tax incentive, uh, Kermit can contest, we have now put benchmarks in place with these businesses to make them hire Pontiac residents or we get to pull their tax incentive from them. And so when you look at the mayor or your candidates, ask them what is going on. If things are doing so well, and all these jobs are coming, how come things look so bad? How come we don't have anything going on that we can be proud of? We need to make Pontiac, Michigan an attraction to the world that folks want to reside here, folks want to come live here, party here, and do whatever they want to do within our city within limits. And so uh, I, I breed Pontiac, I love Pontiac, and probably end up being buried in Oak Hill right here in Pontiac. <laughs> so I asked Mr. and Mrs. Pontiac, uh, to really search in your hearts, uh, get your children, get your grandchildren that's 18 and older, and anyone you know to get out and vote on November 7th. Now, um, I enjoyed you all guys here, and I enjoyed being a part of Mr. and Mrs. Pontiac, but hardworking mom service cannot endorse this, this man as mayor because I am a nonprofit organization that I take care of millions of people over the world. I cannot live here and hear the stuff that I've been hearing, the mud slinging, and it ain't even bad like in Detroit or, 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 or uh, Oak Park or De De uh, Dearborn. It's not, not, no. Listen to me. Me as a mother, grandmother, great grandmother, they're trying to leave legacy to our people, our young people, to carry on. And I'm asking you to vote November 7th for Mark E. Holland to be mayor of Pontiac because I'm going to explain why to you in a minute and Mr. Uh, Kermit Williams to be District 7 and Miss Doris, uh, Doris Taylor Burks for District 6 and I'm asking you to come out because of the fact that I have never put down hardworking mom service for you all as people. And as today, up to day of being October 14th, I have turned this company over to my vice president, which is Janice Stevenson, which is also the uh, president of the company, is Doris Taylor Biffle. I'm asking you, I am about to go live and endorse this man Veronica Anita Taylor Biffle to be mayor of this city. And I'm asking you to come out to his camp. Get to know this man. He right here with you. 559 Auburn Road. Come up here. Talk to him. His camp is open from 9 to 9. Come. Just don't take a paper or some come in the mail and just vote for somebody. Come and meet these people. Get to know what they're about. And I'm begging you. I'm begging you as a citizen now, not of hardworking mom services, to come out and vote for this man on November 7th. And if you got an absentee ballot, uh, can one of y'all young men give me the ad, uh, phone number where they can call here, please? It's a paper right there behind you, mother. I think it's uh, the phone number here is what? Give me that paper right there. Thank you, young man.
The phone number here is 248-667-6927. Call here. Talk to these people. Don't just vote for somebody that's just been there in office and you think they're doing good. Call them. Call the next person. Call them and talk to see what kind of candidate. Do you want to keep this person as mayor? Or do you need a new candidate? Sometimes we need a new candidate to take over because something ain't really going wrong. Or we going to keep them. Don't stay in a box. Get outside the box. Don't be scared to go forward, God said. And all y'all pastors that's endorsing people, you can't do that unless you come up out there. Because your pastor say endorse you, we are ministers. We are just to collect your souls, not to collect endorsements. We are to collect God's souls to get to the people, not to endorse nobody. Thank you. It's just my final statement. Uh, again, I wanted to thank everybody. But I would be remiss if we didn't thank Mr. Quincy Jones you. and the Street Sweepers uh, for pushing that youth millage. Uh, we had a record turnout last year. Uh, we had over 17,000 people that came out to push that millage. And so I'm asking uh, not only the street sweepers, uh, Norbert Burroughs, uh, Mr. Quincy Jones, uh, Craig Jefferson, who's uh, on our team now, uh, I'm asking for their support. Uh, I need those same people to come out and vote for uh, Mark Holland for mayor. They're where you, for the person that uh, authorized and wrote that youth millage along with Councilman Kermit Williams. Now you're looking at an individual who's going to get a building to make sure your baby's babies have somewhere to play, uh, have a professional state-of-the-art facility within our community. <coughs> but I, I couldn't not let this show in uh, without just giving those guys a shout out because uh, if it wasn't been for those guys and coming down to City Hall and put making that push, uh, that millage may not have passed. So. I uh, just want to say thank you to those that did vote who normally don't vote and give a shout out to the street sweepers. We give Mr. Quincy Jones a big round of applause. <laughs> I'd just like to say uh, I'm here today because I love my city and I know in our city we need somebody who understands our city and that's what Mark is. He's been around us all our life. He knows us and understands. He's not just popping in our community taking pictures and then leaving out, going back, dealing with other people and outsiders. It's a time out for all the old way. You, we get with Mark, we can change and have new ways. The old way ain't working. That's old. It's time for a change, and that's what Mark here to do, to change Pontiac, him and Kermit, and the rest of them. But I, I'm endorsing Mark because I know he's the man for the job, and I know he can get us moving forward, and that's why I'm here, because I know without Mark, we're not going nowhere. And if Mark ain't the mayor, I won't be in the city anymore because it's not worth being here because we're going in reverse. And it's not a place for our local people. It's for outsiders who coming in and doing stuff and they reaping all the benefits and we're not seeing none of it. We running around here like little peasants and all the kids in the streets lost. They can't even function because they feel like they're in a box. They feel like they're in prison. So when I see that every day, it made me sad because we didn't grow up like that. We had character and personality. And that's what we need to embed back in our community with our kids. Let them have pride. Because without pride, we ain't got nothing. And how can you have pride when you got poverty all around you? And that's why I say vote for Mark and get him in the mayor November the 7th. And that's what it is. And Mark got my vote. And anybody who riding and understand about election, they know they should come up here, get to know Mark. You got to get to know your candidate. Don't just vote for him because your grandmama and auntie said that's the best person to vote for. Come here. He on the east side. He on Arvin Street. Y'all get out. Y'all riding back. Come in and holler at him. This is the man going to be in charge of your city. You should want to know him because you shouldn't just vote for nobody because you know him. Because we know every Pontiac a small city. You're going to know a candidate, but vote for a person that you get to know. And then you can understand it more. And then you can have your vote can mean something because you know where you're going. you got to understand it. And that's why I'm here with Mark. Thanks. You. Thank you. We ask you guys to vote November 7th for the Holland team. When you're voting for Mark Holland, you're not just voting for Mark Holland. You vote for everyone that you see standing around here and those that's not visible. Uh, this is going to be a team effort to change our city and how we do business. 
So vote for Mark Holland and team November 7th. And thank y'all very much. Hi, this is Hard Working Mom Service here. I'm asking you all here in Pontiac to listen to these candidates. This one is for District 5. Tell them your name. Hi, my name is Joseph Sinclair. And this lady is running for the library board. Alita Brisbane. Now, Mrs. Brisbane, tell me what do you think you should be on the library board? What are you bringing to the table? Well, I am a product of Pontiac, Michigan. I was born and raised here. I am a product of the school systems. I've worked for General Motors for 36 years. I am now retired. I have my last six years of employment with General Motors. I went back to school to educate myself in sociology and social work, and I also have a degree in mental health. Okay, I don't mean to cut you off. I know all about you, but what you bring into the people of Pontiac, Mr. and Mrs. Pontiac, what you gonna do to clean, to make sure that library board, and make sure you do the things to keep people to come out to the library? Tell me that. Okay, I am a team player. I have new ideas. I know now that in this society, grandmothers are raising grandchildren, and then there are so parents that's raising children. But one of my ideas is to bring back the bookmobile. Oh, when good. I was a child, Tuesdays was book, bookmobile day, and we were able to go to the library because we didn't have transportation to get to and from. So I would like to bring that back to the public so that children that cannot get there to the library to do researches, book ports, and so forth, the library uh, mobile could, the bookmobile could come to them. Okay. Now, Mr. Joe Sinclair, I know all about you. You the council. You do uh, city work for the city. You take care of everybody around there. Tell me why you need Mr. Mark Holland, this mayor. Let me let me clear it up. Mr. The mayor Mark Holland. Why you think you should take his district five and you can work his district? Tell me why. Cause see, Mr. The mayor Mark Holland, he was a good district over there. I took him over there to the seniors of Colonial Mellow. They loved him so much, they didn't want to let him go. Talk to me, brother. Tell me. Well, well, Are you going to be able to stand in them shoes? Uh, for one thing, uh, them got some big shoes to fill, but I'm up to the task. Uh, mm -hmm. For the last four years, I've been working with Mark and Ms. Margaret Kilborn busy in the district and making sure that I've been by their side in whatever issue that ha has arisen. I have a passion for District 5. I have not been a person that you have just seen just now because it's election time, but I have been visible. They're working and busy already. I support Mark Holland as mayor solely for one reason, because without him as mayor, we will not have a city for our generations and the generations to come. So I wholeheartedly say this one thing. It's a big, it's, it's a big thing to step into Mark Holland's shoes. But more, more so than that, I want to try to take the district to another level. Okay. Okay. So, Hard Working Mom Services is asking you all, when y'all go to the poll, to let your mind, not these preachers, I can't, I can't ex, uh, express that more, letting your pastors tell you nothing. See, as a pastor, we're only supposed to collect souls, not votes. Because God didn't collect votes. Believe that. Now, Vote for these candidates in your district, every district, and go from there. Don't forget this beautiful lady for the library board, all right? Because I think she's willing to work with everybody and be a good team player. Amen? Amen. 